Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second of the SwiftUI gesture videos where I go over gestures in SwiftUI. If you haven't watched the first video, I recommend that you do so as I build on concepts that we learned there. I'll leave a link in the notes below. There's the same starter project for all three videos in the series, and you can download it from the link in the notes below. The one in the link here has the first two gestures completed. In this video, we'll be covering the drag gesture. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. As with the first two gestures we looked at, I'm going to use the same red circle, but I've reduced the width to 100 to give us some room to move, no pun intended. We're going to attach a drag gesture modifier to this view using the gesture modifier function with the drag gesture as a property. Let's inspect the documentation on this gesture. Now we see that there are two properties that we could have used when initializing our gesture. One is the minimum distance before the gesture is deemed successful, and the other is the coordinate space of the gesture's location. Now the minimum distance is 10, which is fine with me, and the coordinate space is the local coordinate space, which is what I want. So, no need to initialize them, the defaults are just fine. When performing the gesture, we see that we have three functions. Updating, which we looked at when we looked at the long press gesture in the previous video. But this time, we see that the value is not a boolean, but rather an offset of the drag. On changed, which is similar to updating in that we have a current value, which in our case will be the drag offset. And on ended which is the same as we saw in the tap gesture. It allows us to call a completion handler once the gesture has completed. The drag gesture value are the attributes of the drag gesture. And the key one that we're interested in is the translation from the start of the drag gesture to the current position. And that translation is a CG size, which is essentially a rectangle with a width and height where the width is the horizontal offset, which can be positive or negative, and the height is the vertical offset, also positive or negative. If we want to be able to move this circle around on the screen, we have a couple of ways to do this. We could use the updating function, but that would be a bit of an overkill. For this, we can use the onChanged function. First, we'll create an at state variable called drag offset and set it to the initial position of our view, which is a CG size, to dot zero, meaning no offset. As we drag, we want to change the offset of our view's position by whatever that value's translation is. So, with the onChange function, we get our value where we want to extract the translation property and assign it to the drag offset. Now we can add an offset modifier to our view that will move the circle to the new position. Think of the drag offset as I said as a rectangle with the horizontal or x offset being the width and the vertical or y offset the height. These values can be positive or negative depending on which way you drag. To the right is positive and to the left is negative. Similarly, down is positive and up is negative. Here's a diagram that should help you visualize that. So with that knowledge, we can do dot offset, where x is the drag offset dot width, and y is the drag offset dot height. We can preview our app now as it appears at first glance that it is working, just as I want it. I can drag the circle, and when I stop, it stays in position. However, there is a big problem. When I start a new drag, it jumps right back to that center position. And this is because when we start to drag again, we set our drag offset back to zero. And so our red ball's offset snaps back to the original location. We have to keep track of that last position and then add on any more translation that the current drag will be doing. Well, this should be easy enough. We can create a new at state variable called position that is also set to dot zero when the view first loads and we update it when we finish dragging. 
Now, when we end our dragging, all we have to do is add the drag values translation width and height to the last position's width and height to update it. And then we set the drag offset back to zero after the drag so that it doesn't add on to the current offset at the start of our drag. Remember, we're not using the dot updating function here, nor are we using a gesture state as we did in our last video, so that value doesn't get reset automatically. And so within the onEnded function, we use that value argument again and just increment the position by the new translation and then reset our drag offset. Testing this out once more, we see that it's working as expected. The drag gesture is a very useful gesture to enhance our UI experience. So let's take a look at another example. This is a Z stack with a blue rectangle with a slight corner radius in front of a text view. We can't see the text view right now because it's completely covered by our blue rectangle. I want to drop this down a bit so that it looks like a modal type view sitting on top of the back view. And I want to use a drag gesture so that I can drag it to the bottom of the screen or back up again. So let's create an initial top offset constant of 80. Now we can offset the vertical position of our blue view by that offset value. So just dot offset and we'll just use the Y value. Now as we drag our screen down, we want to add that vertical translation or height to the offset and remember that position when we stop our drag. So let's create an at state drag offset variable and like with our ball, we're going to want to remember the last position as well. Both of these will be initialized as a CG size of dot zero. And we can add the height or Y offset of each to our current top offset. So let's now add that drag gesture to our view. And as in the previous example, we will assign the translation to our drag offset. If you watch my videos on higher order functions, you'll know that I'm a big fan of reducing the amount of code that I have. And since this is a trailing closure with a single argument in our closure, we can use some shorthand. First of all, we can remove those outer parentheses, and then we can remove the value in section and just use the shorthand variable $0 to represent the value, reducing our code to this. Now, as you recall in the last example, if we don't remember our last Y position, when I start to drag again, it'll jump back to that original offset. So we need to fix our position on drag end, and all we're interested in is the Y offset. So our positions.height is going to be incremented by the values translation height. And then, of course, we'll reset our drag offset back to dot zero for the new start. Now the problem we have is that there are no restrictions as to how high or low we can drag our blue view. Also, I only want to stop at either the top or somewhere near the bottom. And also if I drag just a little ways away from either the top or the bottom, I want to have it spring back to that position. If I'm at the top and drag far enough, I want it to spring down to the bottom. Also, if I'm at the bottom and drag far enough up, I want it to spring up to the top offset position. So the first thing we need to do is to determine what that bottom offset should be. And after some experimentation, I found that 120 works well. So let's create a constant for that. I said that I want it to snap to either the top or bottom depending on how far I drag. And we want to do this with a nice animation. So I'm going to use a spring animation within our onEnded function. And we're going to replace this code here to reflect where I want it to end up. So if our position is at dot zero, we're at the top. And if we drag up, we're going in a negative direction. 
So we we'll want to return to that dot zero position. Similarly, so or we drag down in a positive direction just a bit, say less than 150, we want to return to that zero position as well. Otherwise, or else, we can spring down to the bottom. Now the bottom position is the height of our screen, so the UI screen dot main dot bounds dot height minus that bottom offset. So this takes care of our movement from the top. So if we're not at the top, we must now be at the bottom. And if I move down in a positive direction, or if we move up in a negative direction just a bit, again, let's just say 150, we'll want to return to that bottom position. Otherwise, we can spring up to our top dot zero position. And then, as before, we make sure that we set our initial drag offset back to zero. Now, testing this, we see that we get a nice spring that returns to the start position if I either move in the wrong direction or just a little to the opposite direction. Otherwise, it will spring to that opposite position. Well, that's it for drag gesture. In the next video, we'll cover the final two gestures, magnification gesture and rotation gesture. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store. And visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.